book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 12 specifically. And we left off kind of in the middle of the chapter, and we want to get back into that. But before we do, we have been asking people to send in their questions. Program after program, time after time, we've been telling people, hey, we got this number, we got this email, you can send your questions here. But you know what we haven't done? Taking questions. We haven't taken any <laughs> questions. We haven't answered any questions. These no. people are writing all these questions, and they're piling up, and we're not... We're in Revelation chapter 12, mm -hmm. so it's a transition point, Yes. right? So at the tra you know, first uh, 11 chapters, mm -hmm. people are getting their questions ready. Yes. Chapter 12 onward, Yes. we start answering questions. Sounds good. Yeah. That's, that's a great explanation, that's Ivor. Way to pull us out. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have a few questions we're going we're gonna to address um, as we get started in this program, but let's begin with a word of prayer. Yvonne, would you like to pray for us? Sure. Father, we're so grateful to you for the privilege of studying your word, and we thank you that you've given us this manual where we can know just what's going to come. Mm -hmm. as, as Danny says, we, we've read the back of the book, and we know, Lord, that we win because of you, because you won, because you are the victor. And so we just thank you for being victorious and for giving us victory as well. We just pray right now that your spirit will be with us, guide us and direct us, Lord, and help us to learn and apply the mm -hmm. information that we study. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I really like that, that phrase, uh, the manual. You know, God hasn't really left us without a manual. And the reason I like that so much is because I just bought a vehicle that is, well, it has a lot of miles on it, so it has a lot of issues. I got a really good deal on it. That's what I like. <laughs> it's a Toyota, so, that, you know. But it doesn't have a manual, mm. and I really need a manual because I'm troubleshooting, I'm trying to take things apart and, you know, fix things, mm. and there's no manual. Wow. But we have a manual. God has not left us without a manual. That's right. And the manual is the Bible, right. and it tells us how we were created, and, and it gives us the big picture of yes. what God's purpose is and mm -hmm. shows us the details as to how we function <laughs> and helps us to troubleshoot, yeah. helps us to troubleshoot. We need that. Yeah. We need that manual. All right, I've got a question here uh, to start us out. It's uh, in relation to Revelation chapter 8, a chapter that we've covered already. And the question here uh, comes from Ray Tucker and Raymond Tucker, and he says, Blessing saints of God, I was watching the broadcast. I heard that the golden altar in Revelation 8.3 was the altar of burnt offering, which was from the sacrifice of Jesus and brought into the holy place. As I understand it, the altar of burnt offering was of brass, but both altars of incense and the Ark of the Covenant were of gold. Therefore, as the passage continues in verse 4, with the smoke of the incense, it shows that it might be the altar of incense. See also Revelation 6 under the fifth seal. God bless. I'm enjoying the study. Good question, Raymond. So let's just go to the verse. Maybe, Jason, you could read it for us. Revelation sure. chapter 8 and verse 3. Okay. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, uh, which was before the throne. Okay, now, here's the important transition in this verse. This verse is talking about two altars, not one altar. Mm. So the first altar that's mentioned is not described as a golden altar. Mm -hmm. The second altar is described as the golden altar before the throne. So Raymond was saying here that I heard that the golden altar in Revelation 8 was the altar, excuse me, that the altar, golden altar in Revelation 8, 3 was the altar <coughs> of an offering. Well, actually, the golden altar in Revelation 8, 3 is not the, off, go, al, the altar of burnt offering. Mm -hmm. The golden altar before the throne is the golden altar of incense before the throne. Mm -hmm. But the first altar is the altar of burnt offering. That's right. And a lot of people miss this. They think, oh, the altar that the angel's standing next to is the same as the golden altar. It isn't. Mm. There's a transition taking place here. Yeah. What God is showing us here is that Christ is taking the offering that he made on the sacrifice that he made on the altar in the courtyard, which represents Calvary and the cross. He's taking that sacrifice into the heavenly sanctuary. Mm. Mm. He's taking it into the heavenly sanctuary. And when Christ mm. ascended to heaven, and he brought with him the merits of his sacrifice. He went into the holy place. 
He went into the first compartment of the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. There's a sanctuary in heaven. Hebrews 8 tells us that very clearly. Right. And there's two compartments there. Hebrews 8 and Hebrews 9 tell us that very clearly. And when Christ went to heaven, He, according to Revelation 8, 3, He went into the compartment that has the golden altar mm -hmm. that is before the throne. And that compartment is the holy place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just to build on that in verse 5, um, it says that, continues to say, the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it to the earth. Um, it again mentions the altar, right? Not the golden altar, mm -hmm. the altar. Mm -hmm. So if we were to take this and go back to the book of Leviticus, let's just go to the book of Le Leviticus chapter 16, and we will see in Leviticus 16 that it was the altar uh, of sacrifice which the priest would uh, take the coals of fire to light the incense. Mm. So in Leviticus 16, Verse 12, it says, he shall take a censer, right? So there goes mm -hmm. a censer, full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord. Yeah, and that's the same censer <clears throat> that's in Revelation 8. Okay. Absolutely. So yeah. the altar here is the, is the altar in the outer court, mm -hmm. which represents Christ's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. mm. It is this, let's look at it this way. Everything in heaven, the, our whole, the whole plan of salvation was mm -hmm. based upon the fire from that altar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Christ's sacrifice mm -hmm. allows the plan of salvation. Yes. It is his sacrifice that yeah. allows the fire from heaven. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit to fall. Yeah, he mm -hmm. said, I'm going to heaven. And I'm, if I'm going, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the angel takes that fire from the sacrifice of Christ, mm -hmm. lights the altar of incense, mm -hmm. uh, um, or, you know, in the censer, lights the altar of incense in heaven, sends that fire down mm -hmm. as the Holy Spirit upon us. Mm -hmm. Amen. So two different altars. Amen. Wow. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, another question here. Who is Michael in Revelation 12, 7 and 8? Who is Michael in Revelation 12, 7 and 8? Okay, let's go with... Uh, uh, Revelation 12, 7 and 8. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Okay. In fact, why don't you read Revelation 12, verse 7 and 8 first, and then we'll go to the book of Daniel. Yvonne, would you like to read those for us? Sure. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Okay, so Bible, you know, speaks about Michael and his angels. Mm -hmm. You have the, Michael and his angels, you have the dragon and his angels, mm -hmm. both representing opposite sides, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, whoever this Michael is, he has angels. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. He has angels. Mm -hmm. um, so, we go back to the Old Testament to get a good idea of who this Michael is, because that's where he's first mentioned. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 12 mm -hmm. and verse 1. And this really is very simple. In mm -hmm. fact, mo most of the Protestant reformers agreed with the position of who Michael is based upon a study of the scripture. But okay. in Daniel 12 verse 1, um, the Bible says there, and at that time shall Michael stand up the great, what? Prince. prince. So he's, a, he's not, you know, a prince. He's the great prince. Mm. All right, so who's the great prince? Well, just, just hold your thought there. Let's go over to the book of Daniel, okay. chapter 9. We're in Daniel 12. Now let's just jump back a couple of uh, chapters. I'm going to go to Daniel chapter 9. Mm -hmm. And um, Daniel chapter 9 is the 70-week prophecy. Yes. And in that prophecy, it speaks of the coming of the Messiah. And mm -hmm. I want you to notice what the Messiah is called. Mm -hmm. Daniel 9, verse 25. 25. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to read that, Yvonne? Sure. <laughs> know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince. Okay, mm -hmm. so Messiah the Prince. So right. the Bible just told us, okay, Michael is the great prince. Mm -hmm. Daniel 9, Messiah the, the Prince. prince. Mm. The great prince, mm. Michael and the Messiah are one and the same. Mm -hmm. So the word Michael means the one who is as God. Mm. That's what the name means, the one who is as God. Mm. Now, some people object and say, no, 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 no. That's all wrong because Michael is an angel. And we know that angels are created, created, created beings. Created, okay. Mm -hmm. But an angel is not necessarily a created being. The, the word angel simply means messenger. Mm -hmm. So Michael is the highest messenger. That's why he's called the archangel, mm. the highest of all messengers. Mm. Um, 
to share with you just uh, uh, two more verses on this, and then we can uh, get into the program. But oh, I got a couple of thoughts too. Okay, well then let's uh, let's just look at First Thessalonians. No, no, no. Let's stay in the Old Testament. Let's look at Malachi chapter three, verse one. Mm. Malachi three, verse one, and uh, this is uh, speaking to the issue of the angel. You know, is Christ an angel or not? Right. Malachi three, verse one. And the Bible says, Behold, I will send my, what? Messenger. messenger. Mm. And the word there is actually angel. That's mm. what the word messenger mm -hmm. is in the Hebrew, angel. And he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall, come, shall suddenly come to his temple. Mm -hmm. Even the messenger, what's the word? Same, same word. For angel. For angel. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. the angel of the covenant, who is that speaking about? Mm. Speaking about Jesus, Christ, right. right? He is the messenger of the covenant. So angel in this context does not mean a created being. Mm -hmm. It simply means messenger. Mm. And so Michael is the highest messenger. He is, um, he is the ark, the highest of all. He is the Messiah, the prince. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we read that Michael, that when Jesus comes again, mm -hmm. he descends with a shout, mm, with, the with the voice, voice of, the archangel. of the archangel. Mm -hmm. So we have two options. Either when Jesus descends, he's like, hey, Michael, let me borrow your voice for a minute. <laughs> so I can, or the voice of the archangel is his own voice. Mm. And it is said, that voice. John vo 5. Yeah. Mm. He says, my voice, John 5, they shall hear. Yeah the voice mm -hmm. of the Son of God, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And the dead shall rise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we go back to Daniel 12, at the time of, you know, there'll be a time of trouble, mm -hmm. Michael sh shall stand up mm -hmm. and they shall be delivered. Everyone that is found uh, written in the book, mm -hmm. many of them that sleep in the dust of the mm -hmm. earth, it all brings us back mm -hmm. to the fact that Michael is another name, was the pre-incarnate name for Jesus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, before he came to this earth. Mm -hmm. so, I, I, Go ahead. Oh, so can we assume that he manifested himself? Was he in a different form as Michael? Was he, was, did he, uh, you know what I'm asking? Well, here's, here's, a, here's a point maybe that could help clarify that, and that is we know that Christ is divine. John right. chapter 1 tells us the Word was right. with God and the Word was God. Mm. In the beginning he was with God and then he became flesh. Christ becoming a man does not make him um, less divine. Why? So God can become anything he wants to and still be God. He can mm. come, the Holy Spirit can come in the form of a dove. God can appear in the form of a burning bush. Jesus can come as a man or an angel or a messenger. It doesn't mean he's not God. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really important. Another important point here is, is that the archangel, that word in the Greek actually means the chief of the angels. Mm -hmm. The commander in chief of the United States Army is the president. He's not an enlisted man. Mm -hmm. right. He's the commander in chief. Yeah. And it's interesting that if you go through the Bible, you will never find a place where anyone else is ever called an archangel right. but Michael. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one else is called an archangel. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Not Gabriel, not anyone else is called the archangel. Only Michael is the chief of the angels mm -hmm. because he's the only one that's the chief of the angels. Mm -hmm. right. He's in charge of them. They're his angels. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're his angels, what does that tell you? That he's an angel? No, not at all. Yeah. So when you look at all the evidence, we don't have to be scared to allow Christ to be a man or to be Michael any more than God coming in the form of a dove or a burning bush yeah. because it doesn't diminish the divinity mm. of who Christ is. Mm -hmm. Christ good. is divine, Christ mm -hmm. is God. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, All we've right. got, I want, I want, yeah, we do need to get into it, but there was one more, there was one more question I was thinking about in relation to, what was it? Uh, was the program. It the, the program. Uh, about Someone this. has asked, yes. you know, yeah. why our programs are that's only it, half that's an it, hour. That's it, oh, I want to touch yeah. on that. Let's yeah. touch on that. So, that's one of the things that's so special about this program. This, this viewer, Marie, uh, wrote, Your Bible study is awesome, but very complex and so intricate. I believe 30 minutes are surely too short. It would pay off to take a good hour to discuss, extrapolate, and dig into such complex <laughs> topic, <laughs> topics and give us a simplistic mind the ability to absorb, digest, and fully process these pre this precious information. Please consider a full hour. And would you have 
all uh, the programs recorded available for purchase. Mm -hmm. We do have all the programs available <laughs> for purchase. Mm -hmm. And all they have to do is call 618-627-4651, wait until they hear Miss Molly's precious voice and press number two, and that'll take them to uh, the call center, which is open Monday through Thursday. Uh, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Man, that's, yeah. a, so, that's a that lot was, of you know, it, it was, but, you know, taking in bite-sized pieces. Yeah, bite-sized <laughs> pieces. That's why we do half an hour. Yeah. And, that's right. Let us mention that uh, when we first uh, decided to do the program, and James and I were speaking, the first time we came, we said, you know, we should be able to get to maybe Revelation chapter, I don't know, maybe uh, halfway through the book, through the book <laughs> on our first visit. Yeah. And after our first visit, I think we had, you know, stopped at Revelation, three? at the end of Revelation chapter 2, or be, just <laughs> begun Revelation Churches. chapter 3, and I was like, 13 programs. We were like, okay, this is going to be much longer than we mm -hmm. thought. So, mm -hmm. yeah. bite size, you know, so that you can digest it, and we're just taking our time going through the book. By the yeah. way, a lot of people that call our office <clears throat> when these programs go on comment on that, and they love it. Mm -hmm. They love the fact that we're going slow. They love the fact that this is bite-sized. They love the fact that we're doing a detailed study in Revelation. They're just not finding that in a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they're really appreciating that. And what I want to say also to this, to this question is, if you want an hour, do get the DVDs. Mm -hmm. Because you can sit through half hour, and then you can sit through another half hour, and another half You can go through hours of them, mm -hmm. one after mm -hmm. another. So they are being aired every day. One Dare to Dream every day at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Yes. So, you know, if people want to see it every day, mm -hmm. you can watch it on Dare to Dream. If you want to see it, I think on uh, the Parent Network, it's on twice a week, once right. on Sabbath afternoon or evening. And just check the schedule yeah, for, the for um, on the Parent Network. But we are on every day. So mm -hmm. depending on, you know, if, mm -hmm. if people want more, they can get more, yeah. or they can purchase the and DVDs. Not to, not to mention, but like we want to learn this stuff too. Mm -hmm. like, so we need 30 minutes. We, if we do an hour and Ooh. all this stuff is coming our way, I want to get this down. Overload. Yeah, overload. Overload. Mm -hmm. So, Ivor, you mentioned the dragon and um, his angels, and we have this model that yeah, has been, been loaned to us. Yeah, dragon all program. Yeah. So that's good. <laughs> here, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of a, a number of models that we're going to be using from Australia, and we're going to give, uh, in the credits, we're going to give the information for our viewers. They can get a hold of these. They can use them in classroom illustrations. That's great. Uh, they can use them in evangelism, Bible studies. Uh, these are great illustrations. You can see here that this dragon has seven heads, and there's ten horns there, and then in the tail there you see what it is basically is, is a picture of the universe with all the stars. And the point here is he, he deceived the third part of the stars of heaven. Mm. This is like heaven with all the stars. So this is illustrating Revelation chapter 12's dragon. Mm. Uh, the seven heads connect to Daniel chapter 7 where you have the succession of kingdoms with a total of seven heads. You have Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece which had four heads, and Rome, so seven all together, and then the ten uh, horns in Revela uh, Daniel chapter 7 again with crowns, there are monarchies. So this is illustrating that in Revelation 12 you have a continuum of the book of Daniel with these nations coming to pagan Rome, which is the, the typified by the dragon. The dragon is, is of course, Satan. Right. He's working through these earthly kingdoms mm -hmm. and he's seeking to upend and to distort and misrepresent God and God's kingdom and God's plan of salvation through these various earthly kingdoms. So one of the things that we're going to see in Revelation <coughs> is the symbolism you know, this heavy symbolism, but if you break down the symbols, it's really easy to understand what's taking place here. And so God uses these symbols because, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? You look at this right here and you think, well, that's the kind of stuff that a lot of kids are into, you know, all these different figures and, you know, action figures or whatever, and it's all over the place now. We got dragons and dinosaurs and whatever. So God actually was way ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he foresaw the interest, the intrigue, the, the curiosity that we would have toward these kinds of images. And so he uses them in Bible prophecy to get our attention mm. and to introduce us to the, the, the powerful truths of history and prophecy that bring us the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. These visual aids are definitely helpful mm -hmm. um, because you can see it. Yes, yep.
Yeah. Good way to good way to get it going, especially yeah. for young people. We're gonna have a couple more as we go through these programs. But yeah. right now we're in Revelation 12. So this one parallels uh, Revelation chapter 12, the dragon that we've been talking about here. I think we left off in about verse 12 of Revelation 12. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Uh, let's just pick up there, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. Jason, can you read that for us? And we'll sure. go from there. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Okay, now this is the conclusion of this picture that we've seen here of, of, of the cross of Calvary. Mm -hmm. And basically what's happened here is that we have been redeemed by the deception of Satan, by the cross. The cross has revealed the self-sacrificing, other-centered love of God. The unselfish love of God has been revealed to the whole entire world. Christ mm -hmm. coming as a man, God in human flesh, coming and giving himself as a sacrifice, not just for our sins, but also for the sins of the entire world, redeeming this planet from the deception of Satan. And so salvation has finally come, and the, and the heavens are rejoicing because there's been questions, the deception of the third part of the stars of heaven here, illustrated in the tale. There's been questions even in the heavenly universe about God's character, and they've been answered. Mm. God is mm. a God of love, and these questions have been answered in the heavens. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth? Mm. What's going on there? The devil has come unto you with great power because he knows his time is short. short. Mm -hmm. So what, what is taking place here as we move into these, these uh, verses following? That's what we want to unfold. I also want to just ask you guys to really focus on that uh, term, short, uh, uh, hands, short time, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we're going to pick up on this theme actually throughout the rest of the book of Revelation. Right. Mm. It's kind of interesting that um, as you look at Revelation chapters 1 through 11, you've been seeing, you know, just uh, lines of history. You know, God's taken us from uh, the cross mm -hmm. all the way down to the end of time. The cross, that's what happens with the seven churches, the seven mm -hmm. seals, the seven trumpets. They begin at a certain time and then take us down. Revelation 12 we saw yes. is a recap mm -hmm. of the entire book, of the entire book of Revelation. In fact, you know what's interesting, and I don't know if we're going to be able to finish this, but uh, Revelation chapter 12 is, is so powerful because it is literally the entire Bible in one chapter, mm -hmm. mm. the entire Bible in one chapter. You know, it, it begins with the woman, um, you know, who is told that she's going to be, she's going to be having a child. Mm -hmm. And of course, remember in, in our previous program, we took that all the way back to Eve. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the promised Messiah was given, the promise of the Messiah was given to Eve. Mm -hmm. So in that first verse of Revelation 12, you basically have the whole history of the Old Testament mm -hmm. waiting for the coming mm -hmm. of the Messiah. Yep. Then you get into the Messiah coming. Um, then you get into what happens after he mm -hmm. uh, comes, he dies, he's, mm -hmm. he ascends to heaven. Mm -hmm. Then you see this history of the dragon being cast down to earth. Mm -hmm. We're going to see this woman fleeing into the wilderness mm -hmm. for a time, times, and half a time, mm -hmm. which we're going to see is 1260 years mm -hmm. once we get into it. <clears throat> and then it ends with the final conflict between the dragon Mm -hmm. and God's end time people. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the entire great controversy yeah, from all in yeah. from beginning to end the entire Bible mm -hmm. juiced down to one into chapter. one chapter. Wow. It's just crazy. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Revelation 12 is an amazing chapter. So that short space or mm -hmm. that short time mm -hmm. um, really takes on a special significance once we get into chapter 13 mm -hmm. because like chapter 13 onward mm -hmm. it says okay now we're going to focus on what that short time mm. really, really is all about. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay, so he was cast out, you know, in the beginning. Mm. Uh, we see he was also cast out again at the, at the uh, death of Christ mm -hmm. in another way, but there's a final way in which the dragon comes down. Mm -hmm. um, James had just mentioned earlier that the dragon is working through earthly powers. Earthly powers. Yep. But there's a time that he actually sheds the earthly powers. Mm -hmm and comes as himself. Mm -hmm. mm. Not as himself, but he comes himself as somebody else. As somebody else. Yeah. Mm. He's no longer working behind kingdoms. Right. Now he's, it's him. I'm here myself, mm -hmm. but as somebody else. To claim else. my kingdom. To claim my kingdom. Wow. And it, you know, it's, it is true. If you look at, we're in the fourth prophetic cycle. 
Revelation 12 begins the fourth prophetic cycle. So we have the seven churches is one, the seven seals is two, and the seven trumpets is three. This is four. Mm -hmm. This prophetic cycle actually ends in Revelation 14, if you think about it. It's just 12, 13, and 14. It's a kind of a, a summary and a rehash of everything we've got, but it's climaxing in the end of time. 15, judgments, plagues. 16, plagues, details. 17, judgment of the whore. 18, recap of the loud cry, but judgment, Babylon has fallen. 19, mm -hmm. judgments. 20, thousand he years, he's here, mm -hmm. saints in heaven, books opened, everything's finished. 21, new heavens and new earth. Yeah. So really 13, 14 is it. Yeah. We're moving into the last actual, and what the thing about this is, is so interesting is, Everything we've been studying so far, most of it is prophetic history, prophetic history, right. prophetic history. Mm. But now we're moving into the future. Mm. We're moving into prophecy that has not been fulfilled yet. And we are going to be looking at some predictions that are so absolute, so powerful, based upon the history we've already seen, that they're going to really help us to understand what the future holds. You know, a lot of people are not sure, you know, right. is it going to be this, is it going to be that? We're into, you know, uh, Muslim, Islamic terrorism, we're into, you know, what is China, what place, role do they play, what role does Russia play, what about the United States, is the papacy still a valid power? Revelation 13 makes it very, very clear who the main players uh, are. Yeah. Mm. Very clear. Wow. And we can be happy mm -hmm. that it is just a short time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because if this time were not shortened, mm -hmm. even the very elect, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So. He's let, letting us know, hey, the things I'm about to tell you, mm -hmm. they, look, they look bad. Mm -hmm. But I promise you, th the devil knows that mm -hmm. when this happens, it's just a short time. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to see, Revelation 13, 14, onward, mm -hmm. short time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, short we time. are there. So oh. Revelation chapter 12 is going to finish up, in a sense, recap for us a little bit of the history that we've already looked at in some of these verses, the woman in the wilderness. But it's really powerful because there's a connection between this woman that's given two wings of a great eagle and Revelation 13. There's a direct connection there. There are certain symbols that are mentioned here that are going to take us into Revelation chapter 13 and give us a good foundation for what's taking place right there. Um, namely, the earth is mentioned here. In Revelation chapter 12, the earth helps the woman in verse 16. And in Revelation chapter 13 and 11, a beast comes up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make a connection there. Mm -hmm. um, but we have run out of time for this program. So Jason, close us out with uh, the number that people can, can call to get a hold of us and get the programs and ask questions. Okay. They can call 618-627-4651 uh, and press the number 2 when they hear the voice. And for that's to order the DVDs. Mm -hmm. Now for the questions, they can email us at uh, sss at 3abn.org. All right. Thank you so much. We are out of time right now, but we are going to get right into Revelation chapter 12, finish it up, and then move into Revelation.